and welcome to Tech Tips with Soldo Media. I'm Amanda. And I'm Linus. And today we have the Blackmagic Ursa Broadcast G2. Yeah, we do. Right? Now, we have done some other videos on this. Yeah. And again, you guys, I want to just preface. Blackmagic is a new beast for us. Mm -hmm. We've lived in the world of JVC and Sony, and Sony broadcast for a very, very long time. And this year we've started playing with the 6K Pros. Yeah. And uh, we've been looking for a new camera to replace our trucks lineup. Yeah. And again, we're in a very interesting market in Sweden. And uh, a lot of competitors have been coming up with HD trucks and 4K trucks, like broadcast mobiles because of the Ursa Broadcast. They're a really popular camera here. And they're cheap. They're very cheap, right? Like compared. Compared. And I think we mentioned this in our other video, like my broadcast change CCU, camera cable, remote, and camera and lens for the Sonys. It gets up there. You know, it's uh, about 400,000 Swedish. Swedish crowns. And then it's uh, about 40,000 US yeah. for the same thing. Is Anyway, it but sounds small when it's in US. I know, right? Because this is $3,000 yeah. US, yeah, right? Like or 30,000 crown Swedish. The difference is insane, but it's allowed competitors to like come out of the woodwork. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And at the end of the day, for broadcast cameras, the lens is what makes the biggest difference. Lens, the lens, and, lens and the sensor. The lens still costs. The lens still costs more a lot. More than the body. And you could put an awesome lens on this guy. Yeah. You know, some of our box lenses that we've used in the past are, you know, 200,000 US dollars. That's two million Swedish crowns. Big boys. So anyway, <laughs> just so that you understand our, our thought process, my interest in this camera is as a broadcaster. Mm. But for your guys' benefit, we're trying to figure it out as a cinema camera. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And the diving into cinema this year has been fun. So It has. Yes, right? the C70 was our first ever cinema yeah. camera. I like it. Absolutely. We use it right now. We use the C70 You're all the You're looking at time. me right now right? through the C70. Right. But we have a studio you're going up to next week, so we'll add some yeah. B-rolls of that. Up in Uppsala. Uh, exactly. And they have the whole system with the Blackmagic broadcast yeah, mixer and board. I and actually everything. haven't seen it yet. That's right. Because uh, I wasn't the one that installed it. You weren't it. the one that installed it. But you're going to be excited. the one to play with it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so why are we going to look at this today? Mm -hmm. uh, we want to make sure that we're actually going to go over the details of this camera piece by piece. From my perspective, again, am I going to invest in this system, even though it's a cheaper system? Is it going to be comparable to, and, and honestly, I don't think if I put it next to Sony's top lineup, it's not going to hold the candle to it. But price-wise, it's a big difference, Yeah. right? Yeah. And so tell me a little bit about the sensor today. So... This guy has a CMOS Super 35 sensor. That's right. So it's not it's not full frame. It's not full frame. And it comes as with the B4 mm -hmm. mount. Exactly. Uh, and with the B4 lenses, it makes it into a two third inch right. uh, sensor. It's th it's still the Super 35 it's sensor. Still, yes, yeah. but it crops in. Exactly. Um, yes, but now since we use the EF lenses. You get that full Super 35. Yeah, and it's, I think it's a crop at around 1.6. Awesome. Yeah. So what we're going to test with this today is the ISO. And yeah. we put this side by side with the C70. Or the gain. Yeah, that's right. It's gain on this camera. But you can actually find on the Blackmagic forum yeah. what the trans translation is. Yeah. <laughs> so we have the ISO side by side uh, low light test yeah. with this guy next to the C70. And we lower the light and pump the ISO up at the same amount and show you what it is. We want you guys to take a look at it. You can see for yourselves where you, you lose that noise floor. Yeah. And it does clean up, I think, at the native ISOs. Which yeah. The, is, the native ISO for this, guys, for the, those of you who, who just, you see the gain, if you want to know, you can see it on the Blackmagic website. Yeah, for a translation. Exactly. Yeah. So like zero is 400, 400 ISO, yes. zero dB, and plus 18 would be 3,200. Exactly. Mm. And I do think that when we, when we look at the test, I think that they clean up quite nicely yeah. at the native ISO. At the native, it looks... Right. And you can actually see the difference in the Canon, where the Canon's cleaned up and not. Yeah. Right? Well, right? You guys get to make that decision yourselves. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at the test footage. Yeah.
so I'll let you guys form your own opinions on it. Uh, in my opinion, I wouldn't use anything after plus 22 dB. No, it gets that. way grainy. I think it's, for me, it's too much. Goodness. It's too much. And again, like, I, we've been in a lot of situations, concerts and stuff like that. They oh, like the low light. Sometimes you have to. Right, Just exactly. for that shot. <laughs> When you're paid for live broadcast, yeah. you have to. Yeah. But again, you want a camera that you don't have to. Yeah, but what I'm saying is that it's good that it can do it. Exactly. It doesn't stop at 18. L let me say it like this, 22. though. If you're doing a big enough event and you're in charge of the TV for whatever reason, maybe yeah. it's your first time, maybe you work with a church or something and they've got a big band in and you're responsible for the whole thing, talk to the lighting guy. Because you want your lights to be good. They yeah. want to look good, but you want to be able to see everybody too. Mm -hmm. Just a thought. All right. So guys, we want to hear your comments. What do you want us to test on this? Yeah. I'm still trying to find a lens that I'm happy with for this guy because I need a B4 mount lens if I'm going to use this as a broadcast camera. Yeah, I sure. need a lens that I can connect the configs to. I need something that has a power motor. So I've been looking a little bit at the cine lenses from, from Canon. I'll put on the screen which two lenses I was looking at, the Fuji and the Canon, yeah. uh, that are similarly priced. But if you guys have some suggestions, let us know. Mm -hmm. If you want to test something with this camera against the C70 or against uh, any of our broadcast cameras, we get JVC 790s here and Sony uh, XC70s, I think, at the moment. Yeah. Uh, but we can get our hands on lots of stuff to test. Yeah. Let us know in the comments what you want to see this camera do, what you want to try out, and what you want to see us put on it. And we'll do our best. Yeah, yeah so you can send in the comments, or you can exactly. send an email, or you can, yeah. yeah, you know. And help us out again, because like I said, I'm looking at this as a possible replacement for a mobile bus, and with the fiber and everything like that, it's an economically good deal. It is. Right? But let us know your thoughts. Thank you for watching. And I hope you liked the video. Yeah. <laughs> we want to hear from you. All so. right. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Don't forget to share this with all of your friends. We want your friends to be our friends. And uh, yeah, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You know how it is. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Have an awesome day. See you in the next one. We'll see you in the next one. Take care. Thanks. Thanks.